All right, guys, in today's video, I'm going to talk about what my favorite travel lens is. Let me show you some pictures that I've taken on my travels to show you how I've maximized the performance of this lens. All right, this choice is made by me. This does not mean that you will like my choice. It also doesn't mean that there isn't a better lens out there in the market to choose from. It's just based on what I have in my camera bag. So my choice for the best travel lens that I currently possess is the Sigma 35 millimeter 1.4 art series lens uh, for a Canon EF mount. So EF stands for electrofocus, meaning that there is a built-in motor in this lens that uh, gives you autofocusing capabilities. Uh, the other thing is with this lens, it is a prime lens. So this means that you cannot zoom in nor zoom out uh, to get a different type of focal length. So this year I have traveled to Santa Monica Beach in Los Angeles, California. I've gone to Nashville, Tennessee. Denver, Colorado, Boston, Massachusetts, and I have other trips that I would like to conduct in the next year. And the thing is that in all the previous cities that I've been to, when I'm not at home and I'm not comfortable, the one lens that I always have on my camera uh, is the Sigma 35 millimeter. It gives me the best of both worlds. It's a little bit of a wider lens, but it's not too telephoto, it's not too zoomed in. It's a great focal length for everything. Some of the positives about the lens is that it is a prime lens. Therefore, the aperture goes down to a 1.4, which means I can utilize this at nighttime. I can also use it on cloudy days in order to have the most amount of light that I could possibly get through the lens. This lens, uh, historically, people view it as a portrait lens, also as a street photography lens. And that is mainly what I use it for. I get some great shots of myself and others to deliver some sharp, detailed photos with this. I also love landscapes and uh, street shots and the wideness of the lens is perfect to capture murals and other scenic shots. Now the autofocus paired with my Canon 5D Mark IV works really great. It's really fast. Very rarely do I have to switch to manual focus because both of these work in tandem to give me some really sharp and quick focusing shots. Now, the one drawback is that it isn't a silent motor. So if you're doing video, if you have a road mic on top of your camera, or if you're using the built-in mic in the camera, you are gonna hear the motor. It's not super loud, but trust me, you are gonna hear it in your videos enough for you to consider maybe like a lavalier mic uh, for when you're shooting video. Now, like I said, it's not for everybody. There are some drawbacks to this. One of the biggest ones is that it's heavy. It is built like a tank, but because of it, it is very sleek and it has a very nice modern look to it. Uh, that paired with my 5D Mark IV, it looks pretty badass. But the thing is that it is 1.4 pounds, I believe, like one and a half pounds. So it is very heavy. I don't mind it. I actually prefer heavier equipment because my 5D has a uh, battery grip paired with this. It's basically a dumbbell. It's very difficult for me to loose uh, my grip on it. It's, it. I don't think I'll ever drop it. It's very sturdy, feels good in the hand. And the other thing is if I'm shooting video, that heaviness helps me keep it uh, focused when I'm panning shots or doing anything similar to that. And of course, as I've mentioned, it's a prime lens, so you won't be able to switch uh, depending on what situation you're in. I was in Denver at the zoo and I wish I did have a telephoto lens so I can capture some of the tigers, some of the uh, other animals there. And I wasn't able to. I had to switch to my 50, which was the closest focal length I could get to zoom in. Uh, but that was that's really one of the only drawbacks is you can't switch focal lengths. Um, in my camera bag, as I mentioned, I have a 50 millimeter lens. I also have a 10 to 22 millimeter wide lens, and I also have a uh, 18 to 135 telephoto lens. Uh, however, those last two are EFS, uh, so I can't use them on my full frame camera. The thing with this one is that it is compatible with APS-C 
and full frame camera so everybody can actually use this lens no matter what camera you have if i had the option to maybe replace this i would look into maybe trying the 24 to 70 millimeter lens uh, i don't have it unfortunately not yet uh, but for right now i definitely love this lens i like the low aperture i'd have to test that 24 to 70 to see if it works for me in low light situations or if it even matters when i was in my boston trip most of the times when i was in the city it was at nighttime so this thing came in clutch for me so again like i said this is my review on which lens i prefer it doesn't mean that you guys don't have one that's better it doesn't mean that there isn't one out there that is better than this it just every lens is perfect for the situation that you're using it in. So this won't work in every situation, just like other lenses, no matter how great they are, might not work in other scenarios. So overall, for the, for the quality of this, for a wide range of different types of shots that I'm trying to shoot, this 35 to me is the one that I prefer and it's the one I'll continue to choose until I find something better. So with that being said, that was my review. Hit the like button, comment what your favorite focal length is to travel with. Uh, subscribe to this channel and uh, follow me on Instagram at Jerry Revolutions to see uh, some of my future travels, some of the shots I've taken. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it and I'll catch you all down the road.